odontoid fractures. Here we can remember that the second cervical vertebra called the axis has its odontoid process as a main component and the pedicle in its unique place and direction also the pars interarticularis both were discussed in Hangman's fracture. The pediatric axis we can remember here that the the pediatric axis has five primary ossification centers and before birth the odontoid the two halves of the odontoid fuse together so we have four primary ossification centers and uh, here is the odontoid process, the vertebral body and two neural arches and another secondary ossification center at the summit of the dense appears between 3 and 6 years of age and fuses by the age of 12 and also we shouldn't forget the, the synchondrosis of the second cervical vertebra will be mentioned in the next slide and the subdental synchondrosis may be vis visible until the age of 11. Here is the pediatric axis, here is the odontoid center, the primary ossification center, the two neural arches and one for the body. And here is the secondary ossification centers, uh, center and total of five ossification centers. And here are the, the odento Centra odentoneural synchondrosis. Here is the odento central between the dense and the body, and here is the neurocentral synchondrosis. Synchondrosis. Here is the coronal section shows the ossification centers and the synchondrosis. Regarding the age and force in young age, significant force is required as in motor vehicle accident and fall, of, and fall from height, while in old age, simple ground level falls can cause odontoid fractures. The incidence is 10 to 15% of cervical spine fractures, and the mechanisms uh, either flexion, which is more common, or extension, which is occasional. Clinical presentation may be upper cervical pain or myelopathy and there is a suggestive sign which is the tendency of the patient to hold the head while moving from the upright to the supine position he tends to hold the head and this is, uh, this is a very suggestive sign and regarding type 2 in a study, 82% were intact, neurolo in, in, were neurologically intact. 8% had minimal sensory disturbances, and 10% had significant significant neurological deficits. Type one and three odontoid fractures are rarely associated with neurological deficits. Fifth, uh, 25 to 40% of dense fractures are fatal at time of accident. The classification, Anderson and Dr. Alonzo classification of odontoid fractures of one of the, is one of the widely used odontoid fracture classifications and it had many modifications. The most widely used are type 1, 2 and type 2A and type 3 and 
as will be seen here the type 1 is the fracture of the tip only like this head and type 2 is the fracture of the neck of the dentoid and type 3 is the fracture through the body of the odontoid process the treatment the practice guideline management uh, the practice guidelines for management of isolated odontoid fractures are level 2 evidence isolated type 2 odontoid fracture in adults more than 50 years of age should be considered for surgical stabilization and fusion and as will uh, as we will know it is not fixed rule and also the external immobilization can be used for all types level 3 non-displaced type 1 2 and 3 may be managed initially with external cervical immobilization recognizing that type 2 is likely to need surgery or at least it has higher rate of non-union Type 2 and 3 consider surgical fixation for dense displacement more than 5 mm or type 2 fracture uh, which is comminution fracture type 2a or inability to maintain or achieve alignment with external immobilization for surgical intervention it will be anterior or posterior approach external immobilization for 10 to 12 weeks for those not, uh, not meeting surgical indications either use the halovist which is superior to SOMI or sternooccipital occipital mandibular immobilization the halovist fusion rate is 72 percent the rigid color the, the fusion rate is 53 percent and also consider calcitonin therapy which has been used in some studies in conjunction with rigid cervical orthosis. Here is the rigid colors, Aspen color and Philadelphia color. Here is the halovist. Here is the SUMI or stern occipital mandibular immobilization. Type 1, so rare that meaningful analysis is uh, so rare that meaningful analysis is difficult. If there is associated atlanto-axial instability, surgical fusion may at times be necessary. For type 2, treatment remains controversial. Surgery cases and immobilization cases are not definite. 30% of uh, overall non-union rate in type 2 fractures. 10% non-union rate for those with displacement less than 6 mm predict uh, uh, for those uh, uh, with displacement less than 6 mm and predicting non-union in cases of degree of displacement more than 6 mm the non-union rate is 70% so the non-union rate reaches 70% in displacement more than 6 mm and only 10% if the displacement is less, less than 6 mm. The age less than 7 years almost always heal with immobilization alone while the increasing age is thought to be to increase non-union rate with debate about the exact age of limit. Some used the 40s and the others used the late 60s. Indications, indications for surgery for odontoid fracture type 2, as we mentioned, no hard rules. In patients more than 7 years, as we mentioned before, the, the less than 7 years is likely to heal with external immobilization. In patients more than 7 years of age with any of the following, Displacement more than 5 mm, instability at fracture side in Halovist, age more than 50 years, non union, including firm fibrous union, especially if accompanied by myelopathy, 
and disruption of the transverse ligament. Surgical options for odontoid fracture, odontoid type 2 fracture, odontoid compression fracture is appropriate for acute type 2 fractures with intact transverse ligament and attached with no much displacement. C1-2 arthrodesis for options including wiring, fusion, transarticular screws, and Halifax, Halifax clamps. Here is the odontoid screw and will be mentioned in a different lecture. Type 2O considered early, uh, consider early surgery for type 2A. Type 3, about 90% heal with external immobilization alone and analgesics if adequately maintained for, four to four, for 8 to 14 weeks. Halo vest brace is probably best with fusion rate that reaches 100%. The rigid collar with fusion rate from 50 to 70%. And surgical treatment options. C1 to arthrodesis and anterior odontoid screw fixation. Non-union. There are some radiographic, radiographic criteria for non-union. Pseudoarthrosis in the form of sclerosis or resorption of both fragments or deficit in the dense with definite loss of cortical continuity, movement of dense fragment demonstrated on flexion extension x-rays. Here is the pseudoarthrosis indicating non-union. The so osodontoidium is defined as a smooth independent ossicle of variable size and shape separated from the base of a shortened odontoid process by an obvious gap with no osseous connection to the body of C2, so completely separated. Two anatomical type, orthotopic and dystopic type. The orthotopic type, the osodontoidum lies in a normal position in relation to anterior arch of atlas and moving with it, while dystopic type the ossicle is, ossicle is fused with a basion. Here we can see the orthotopic type where the C1, uh, where the os odontoidium is related to C1 arch, anterior arch, in relation to anterior C1 arch, anatomical position here. And here in this topic type, it is fused to the basion. It is fused to the basion. Etiologic theories. Either congenital or acquired thirds were suggested, and the acquired is trauma, neglected old trauma, caused non-union of fracture. Clinically, can present with pain or myelopathy, and myelopathy may be transient or static or progressive myelopathy, or Symptoms and signs of vertebral basilar ischemia or can be discovered incidentally. The diagnosis plain cervical spine x ray, AP, open mouth, and lateral static and flexion extension x rays with or without CT or MRI. The treatment patients without neurologic signs or symptoms may be followed clinically and radiologically uh, and with radiological surveillance or posterior C1 to fusion may be done. Patients with neurologic signs or symptoms or C1 to instability posterior C1 to internal fixation and fusion. If surgery is done, post-operative halo immobilization in case of wiring and fusion uh, uh, a less rigid internal instrumentation is used. So the halo immobilization is used 
a non-rigid fixation after uh, post-operatively for patients with irreducible cervicomedullary compression and or evidence of associated occipital atlantal instability, occipital cervical fusion C1 to uh, C uh, and C1 plus or minus C1 laminectomy. And for patients with irreducible cervicomedullary compression, consider venter ventral decompression. Thank you.